fires, rioting, mass looting, six fatalities. This is the kind of stuff that's been grabbing international attention. Over the last week, New Caledonia has descended into violence. The spark, a new French law that could weaken the political power of the indigenous Kanak population. Back here, the news turned to getting stranded New Zealanders out. The first extraction flight on a Defence Force Hercules that's just landed in the capital, Noumea. But an extra 1,200 French police reinforcements and even the hasty surprise visit of President Macron is unlikely to quell the fury of the pro-independence movement, particularly Tangata Whenua. Ever since New Caledonia was annexed by France in the 1850s, Kanak activists have fought to retain Tino Rangatiratanga over lost land and resources, like the enormous nickel reserves exploited by the French. After the violent clashes of the 80s, France signed the Numia Accord, promising greater autonomy to Kanaki. It also committed to holding three referendums to determine whether New Caledonia should stay part of France. The first two in 2018 and 2020 voted no to independence, but it was close. The third was held at the height of COVID in 2021. The Kanak people were in mourning. They adhered to tikanga and refused to take part. That meant the vote for independence was overwhelmingly lost. Upshot, France continues to control the stuff that matters, the economy, the military, immigration, elections. And elections have been a flashpoint. The Numir Accord agreed that the right to vote would only go to those who've been resident in Kanaki since 1998. But last month, the French Parliament voted to change that to residents who have lived there for 10 years or more. Big difference. Cue yet more protest. <laughs> Pro-independence fighters warned that the rule changes would seriously dilute political representation at the expense of Tangata Fen. So you describe President Macron as a fireman. Can you explain to me what you meant by that? He's just coming to New Caledonia as, as a fireman, as after he had set fire, the, the country on fire. What uh, the situation that we are in today is partly because, uh, if not mainly because uh, he has not uh, uh, you know, listened or heard the call by the African guys and many uh, uh, groups within New Caledonia and in the region. Who is actually fighting on the streets? What are the who are the different parties that are involved? It's mainly, you know, between the, the urban youth and, and the police and some civilian groups. We are coming this we marginalize. The person who we voit, the manque de peau. They do fait du tie standing then do be kneeling. You know, having oppression every day. There's incredible inequality. And I think that's one of the key drivers of the rioting we've seen over the last week or more. Mm. You know, young people who have very poor access to public services, not the same educational opportunities as wealthier New Caledonians, uh, people without jobs, people without hope, have uh, led to terrible... Conflict. For a lot of New Zealanders, they think of Kanaki as New Caledonia, as Club Med, as a place to go, as a tourist. What's the reality for young Indigenous people there? I think what we've seen in the past few days is this, uh, this eruption of violence uh, on the streets, especially around Numea, is just tells how much our youth have been left out of you know, uh, to economic development. There's a lot of unemployment, social injustice. You can tell there's a big gap between the haves and the have-nots. 
So what's happening today is not only a political crisis, we're also going through an economic and a social crisis. The young people want the self-determination for the country because they've seen hardship they've been through and they want it, they want it now. Ce qu'on veut voir, c'est que tout le monde soit égaux et qu'il faut investir dans les quartiers riches, qu'il faut investir dans les quartiers pauvres. C'est pour ça que les gens, ils volent. Much of France's global status derives from the fact that it has colonies in every ocean of the world. To use the United Nations jargon, France is the administering power of non-self-governing territories. So France presents itself as an alternative in the region to um, partners at a time of US and Chinese strategic competition. But um, France's pretensions to be a major player are undercut by the reality that um, within New Caledonia, within French Polynesia, people want a pathway to an independent and sovereign nation. They don't want to be part of um, the French Republic. Would all indigenous Canucks be on the same, same wavelength when it comes to the pro-independence movement, do you think? Because Māori here in New Zealand, we, we're not exactly united when it comes to constitutional transformation and decolonisation. No, we do have that here also. There's some non, I mean, some Canucks, uh, Indigenous people also uh, you know, uh, against independence or not totally for independence now. So we can clearly see progress in the voting, you know, in, in our population, uh, increasing towards a, uh, a yes to, to independence and self-determination. There are minority population, now granted, 42% roughly of the population, but they face the same challenges as Indigenous peoples all around the Pacific Rim. Mm. And France grapples badly with that. Um, and the current attempt to change the voting roles for the local political institutions, the provincial assemblies and the Congress symbolizes that. French politicians talk about democracy, democratic rights, everyone should have the right to vote. But can actually, we're in a colonial situation. If civil peace is restored, and if the president pulls back on these electoral reforms, is that gonna actually make a difference though, given indigenous Canucks are outnumbered when it comes to referendums and things like that? This uh, electoral uh, reform bill is threatening that demographic in, in favour of our vote for, for independence, because if it brings in more non-citizen onto the electoral roll, that will definitely outnumber our people in, in, in Uganda. So this is why we're calling for that uh, reform to be withdrawn. France has set repeated stupid deadlines to try and force people to the negotiating table and connect political leaders, customary leaders, church leaders and others have said, don't do this. We need time to forge a consensus between quite divergent opinions about what should happen next. There's been some inflammatory language from different French leaders using words like mafia and terrorism and, and talking about foreign influences. How do you respond to those sort of comments? Well, I think it's uh, too simplistic to, to, to be calling uh, you know, youth groups, uh, mafia and, and terrorist groups. I think it's just a, a social unrest and social uh, issue that has not been dealt with you know, over the past 30 years and it's just erupting. now. In terms of foreign influence, I'm not personally and directly aware of uh, any direct uh, you know, foreign influence into our politics in Nicaragua. To suggest that this is driven from outside just is a denial of the reality that these are long-standing sovereignty claims, particularly by Indigenous Canac, but not only by them. Many people want to move peacefully to a independent and sovereign country. It's complex. There are many people in New Caledonia who don't want that. To square that circle will take time, will take dialogue, will take work together. This week is a terrible setback for that process. What would you like New Zealanders to know, Jimmy? What's your key message to us? My key message to, to New Zealanders and especially to, to our brothers and sisters, uh, Maori people, 
uh, is that you know we're in the same situation uh, as you are in, in whether in New Zealand or Australia or some other parts of, of the Pacific. Uh, all we are calling for is for our right to self determination to be recognized, so we can you know can take decide on our own future how we want to run this country. Uh, it's not an, uh, excluding anyone. You know, uh, we we want to build this country with others who everyone was uh, uh, lives in this country and make this country their own. But all we are asking for is that for our right to self determination to be recognized first, then we can host other people in our country. I think the circuit breaker is to recognize that this is a regional issue, not simply a French domestic issue. And the French are very sensitive about sovereignty. There's a role there for Australia, for New Zealand, both from governments involved in diplomacy, working with their island counterparts in the Pacific Islands Forum. There's a role for trade unions, churches, women's groups, NGOs, to work with their counterparts in all sorts of ways in coming days, just to deal with the human tragedy that this writing and, and destruction has caused.